Hello everyone, Rurikon here coming at you with another first impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at Shadowrun Returns. So um, I'm actually playing a dwarf because obviously whenever they give me the option to play a dwarf I do tend to basically pick dwarves. And uh, we are somewhere in between the first uh, couple of hours of the game. Uh, maybe even just the first hour because I um, when I started playing the game I noticed that this is a very story heavy game and I don't want to delve too deep into the story uh, because then when I make my first impressions video there's going to be spoilers and all that kind of stuff and I want to try and avoid that as much as possible. So what is Shadowrun Returns all about? So Shadowrun Returns is a, is a game based around a tabletop game called Shadowrun. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you guys about the lore of Shadowrun or how much I've actually played Shadowrun because I've never really played it. I was just really curious about this um, this particular game and I was able to get a key from Brainhaired Schemes to go ahead and have a look at it. So, uh, the, the very overarching story, so to speak, because uh, like I said, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm just going to give you the very like minor details of the story is that uh, a friend of yours just died. Apparently you guys were really good friends and he had a dead man switch on him and uh, basically that caused it to activate once he died and you received a message indicating uh, that your friend's uh, lawyer firm would actually pay you 100,000 credits, Nguyen, whatever that's supposed to be called, uh, 100,000 Nguyen for uh, figuring out what happened to your friend. And obviously you start this investigation and the, the things kind of start going in different directions. You go to your friend's crime, uh, the crime scene where your friend died and then you interact with a whole bunch of people and eventually you end up in a situation where I'm looking for um, the, where I came looking for the boyfriend of a girl that works at a bar who supposedly knows something about the death of my friend. So this is her boyfriend. Uh, I've met up with him and he seems to think that his, um, that his girlfriend is somewhere in a place called the Royal Apartments. So we're going to be hitting that. Uh, there's also a side objective for me right now, which is find Mori's Meat Emporium, which I honestly don't know where that is. But yeah, and either way, as you guys can see, you play this game as an isometric um, RPG. Uh, this is a turn-based game, so... Um, Pretty much the, the way that you see things right now is the way that things happen in combat. Like you could switch from being in, um, in just straight up exploration mode to combat in the bat of an eye. Oh look, there's Mori's Meat Emporium. Let's see what's up with that. Looks like you can actually talk to that guy, so we'll talk to this guy. There is no voice acting in the game, uh, as far as I can tell so far. I've heard nobody speak at this point. Um, they they use a lot of uh, description, which really does remind you of board games. Basically, they try to describe the scene at you not just through uh, what you're looking at it. They try to give more detail uh, through uh, text-based descriptions. Like for instance, the small animal meat the, the the small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow and canine to the exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. So this was probably this guy's father's business? Let's find out. As soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more? Relax, man. My friend just has a question. So basically this Paco guy is kind of like a gangster. So um, obviously that is why the, the shopkeeper's like, What do you want? I've already paid you for the protection. All that stuff. In case you guys haven't noticed yet, by the way, the game is obviously sci-fi themed. Relax, man, my friend, just have a question. Everything cool here? No, you must be Mori. Do I look like a fat old man to you? <laughs> well, that's um, debatable. I'm Manny. Mori's my dad. Now, what do you want? What would someone want to buy zebra meat for? Now, this is because uh, I've actually saw something like a, a clue on this um, on the guy's girlfriend diary. Uh, where she basically bought a whole bunch of zebra meat for, from this guy, so let's let's try and figure that out. Some people eat it, but I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it out to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for this stuff for some reason. So there's also something in her diary about hellhounds. No, 
Not her diary. Uh, it was her browser history, I think. Her browser history revealed that she was researching a lot of stuff about hellhounds. So, yeah, whatever she's planning probably involves hellhounds. There we go. Odrek. Yeah, the game also has those uh, fake curse words that you see sometimes in sci-fi movies and stuff like that. That's why Coyote wanted zebra meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound. Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere in the real, and if she never picked it up... Do you know someone named Coyote? Nope, don't go into much of that shaman stuff. I have this re res receipt. Receipt? Yeah, I have this receipt for an order of zebra meat. Still have it in for me. I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here, it is all yours now. That is a problem with Paco's obviously because uh, Paco is a gangster, so let's move onwards. But yeah, this is a lot of what you can expect. At least it is a lot of what I've come to expect from um, from Shadowrun Returns up until this point. There's obviously also combat, which I'm kind of hoping we will get to see some throughout this video. But a lot of the game is actually about figuring stuff out, analyzing crime scenes, and advancing the um, and advancing the story of the uh, investigation of your friend. Paco, as your eyes adjust to the flashing lights, you spot the body of a woman that on the pavement behind the police line. Panic spreads across Paco's face. Oh, oh no, is that Coyote? This isn't happening, god damn it! Pull yourself together, take a look, is that her? Paco breed, now take a closer look, is that her? I'm very polite. Paco steps forward and breathes a huge sigh of relief. No, no, it's not her, thank god. Look, let's not hang out here too long. Too many Lone Star pigs around. Paco looks over at the victim again. It's too bad whatever happened here, I'm not going to let anything like this happen to Coyote. Coyote being her girl, his girlfriend. I was about to say her, her girlfriend. Now where would the thing be? It's probably, do I have to go through here? That might be a problem, because they're not going to let me through this crime scene. I don't think. Either way, I'm going to go have a chat with the Popo. Tall, emotionless, Lone Star officer blocks entry to the criminal scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of the organ grinder's coroner, Dresden. I'm here to see coroner Dresden. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and use this because I know uh, coroner Dresden, so let's see. And who might you be? It's all right, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. Oh, see? I've made friends with this guy at the start of the game. So uh, you, you get these several dialogue choices, which I believe that you could have been a really unpleasant... Uh, person to this particular guy, where, whereas I wasn't. I was trying to be nice and stuff, so... The officer looks at you with poorly concealed skepticism. Okay, then, make it quick. Look at that, I just gained access to the crime scene because of my relationship with Dresden. So it brings you out here, hot on the trail of the dead of the dead man's killer. Coincidence, but believe it or not, I take it you've stumbled across another Ripper murder. Oh, wow, there's a lot of text in here. <laughs> Yeah, it is what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, go I'm gonna try and skip through some of this. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, I'm, gonna t I'm just... It's like, like I said, I don't want to uh, overcomplicate things. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? Okay, so who's this? Officer Aguirre. The plainclothes Lone Star Officer before you um, sports a tacky hat and a crooked grin to match. So you're, the ones who, so you're the one who's working for the dead man, eh? McCluskey warns you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer Aguirre. Pleased to meet you. Like I said, it is very important for the story of this game for you to constantly see all of these conversations. Just the simple fact that I kind of rushed through the conversation in the corner there is actually very diminutive of my own experience of the game. I'm going to have to actually rewind and then go back and see all that stuff. But uh, what can you tell me more about the uh, the... Murder took place here. Not much, really. We know it was about three hours ago. Her eyes have been surgically removed. Didn't need Dresden to figure that out that much. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me, I've been scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses, but no luck so far. Them Ripper might as well be you. Be a ghost. I take it you and McCluskey don't exactly see eye to eye. McCluskey is another detective who is an asshead, so... Let's just say McCluskey and I have conflicting interests. Do you have any leads on the Ripper that I should know about? 
Ha, plenty if you ask McCluskey, but the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Thanks for your time, officer. Hold on a minute there, you haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. What? Yeah, see, you make a contribution to the fund, I put you on a list and let you know the next time we find any orphans that you might be interested in. What? Interesting. So this guy wants a bribe. Okay, fine, whatever. Shall we say 300 new yen? Even 100 new yen would make a big difference for an orphan these days. Some orphans, ha some orphans have more expensive taste than others. 200 can take it or leave it. Okay, fine. His face splits into a wide grin. Excellent. I'll start an account for you. We'll get any useful new leads on the Ripper. I'll give you a call. Now better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. So basically I bribed this guy so that he gives me new information. And again, you guys saw on the choices you could choose not to bribe him if you so desire. It's just the way that I'm playing this game, I'm trying to be nice but also trying to be effective. So that's why I kind of bribed his ass off. Either way, we've already spoken to Dresden, so... Oh, wait, we should... We haven't really checked the scene itself. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young woman female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out, and you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. Bite marks? That's interesting. Can I talk with this guy? What does this guy say? Elf. The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. All elves are terribly ugly, let's face it. His meticulously clean lab coat, format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire, do you know which organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Oh, he's actually... Oh, I thought that he was uh, on the crime scene, but he's not. He's actually on the other side. Interesting. So he wants to know where the body is going. Hmm. Whoa, I didn't even know elves could be that ugly. <clears throat> Who's asking? Strange high-pitched warble you could not expect to emerge from his mishappen face. Oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. Good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. Should probably talk about, uh, about this with uh, Dresden, because Dresden's a cool guy. Need something else? Any fascinating new leads? <clears throat> what about the bite marks on her arm? Ah, completely unrelated. Appears some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley sometime after her death. Did you notice a particularly ugly elf standing over the crowd earlier? He's gone now, but he was asking about the body. Wondering which organ grinder's facility will be taken to. Interesting. Well, there's those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure, but that's pretty poor form to inquire at the site of a murder. An ugly elf, hey, I'll keep an eye out. Shouldn't be too hard to spot if he comes back around. Sergeant Aguirre seems pretty friendly. Can I trust him? Yeah, it sounds about right. Any, any opportunity to get in McCluskey's way, he'll take it a bit sleazy, sure, but he'll take I'll take Aguirre over McCluskey any day of the week. Thank you, Dresden. So yeah, I can definitely feel a, a certain uh, relation starting to form with some of these characters, particularly this guy. This guy has been really useful so far. He's been a really nice guy, so either way, let's move onwards. Let's see if we can actually get to the Royal Palace Hotel thing. Now, the control uh, scheme, you can actually move the camera by using your mouse at the edges of the screen, or you can use AWS and D to move. Uh, and let's see if we can actually get into some combat, get in some trouble here, please, so that I can showcase some of the game's uh, combat, which is actually pretty good. Royale, oh yeah, this is the hotel. There's a guy here, though. I wonder what he's got to say. A junkie. Hey, guy, have any extra Nuyen? I, ju I just need some sucro zoom for the shack over there. Sure, here's a fiver. Uh, yeah, well, let's give this guy ten, because why the hell not? I mean, we do have a, a, a bit of money, so... Thanks, Chummer. Hopefully this guy will come in handy. We'll see. Either way, I might have just threw, threw uh, ten uh, dollars away. Come on, guy, let's go find Coyote. Okay, I'm ready. Let's roll in. I do have a feeling that now probably we're going to see some combat. Hopefully. 
You roll up on the most impressive bit of tenant squalor you've seen in a long time. There's a few street lamps here. What light there is flickers with uncertainty. Most of the buildings are damaged and tagged. The smell of old rotting trash mished, mixed with you don't want to know is overwhelming. It's no wonder people lived here turned to BTLs. Anything is better than this. Better than life chip is the newest drug on the market. You don't need a good life. You can slot them in someone else's. Live through them and wreck your brain in the process. Wow, that seems messed up. Front doors of the Real Apartments aren't even locked. As you step inside, you can hear a junkie crying for another hit. It's time to find Coyote and find out what she knows about the night of Sam's murder. Real Apartments, what a hole. Can imagine what it was like for Coyote growing up here. Paco trails off. A hellhole full of junkies and looks like Stevie J's gets their rent money and the drug money. Coyote's here, we have to hurry. She's good, but well. These BTL guys pay to stay well informed. They may have known she was coming. So we're probably going to get some action pretty soon here. The music is even building up. Hey you, I have a tweaker. Woman scratches herself like a cat in a couch leg. Please, can you spare some Nuyen? My cred stick's a little light too lady what can you do for me in exchange you've got a stink on you junkie drop the chips get clean you look like you could use a break all you need is a few neon for a better l oh no what can you do for me in exchange i've got nothing left to give guy it all goes to btls please just a few new and maybe i can cred you for some information have you seen a woman come through here today armed and looking for trouble yes no hell what do you want me to say i'll tell you anything everything please she drops to her knees, ple pleading. You're far too gone to help me or anyone. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, but I can't help you. You should leave this place if you can. The BTLs are here. I just need something. She collapses. Yeah, she, she was useless. She was a waste of time. Also, I like to zoom in as much as I possibly can because uh, the game actually looks reasonably good. I mean, it's not the most impressive thing uh, in terms of fidelity, but it definitely looks good. It's 1080p, and uh, I don't know why they, they allow you to like zoom out all the way like this. It's like almost you're playing a strategy game, but... Sad old man. What have you got to say, sad old man? Like a lazy pigeon, he watches you approach. You're not from around here, are you? I don't want any trouble. Easy, Gramps. Just looking for information, then I'm gone. Bad day to come around here and expect a bit of a commotion upstairs. Stevie's men's are twitchy. This pretty young thing came through earlier, snooping around like you two are. I could tell she weren't here for the BTLs. I don't know how she got upstairs, but there was a lot more gunfire than there usually is for this time of the day. Ooh, that's not good. Did you see her come back down again? Nope, a couple of Stevie's men came around asking what anyone saw and kept my mouth shut. I did. He's got top floor all to himself. Sounds like Coyote's run went sideways on her. Now this is an extraction. Uh, okay, let's see. She's my only lead right now. Can you help me out? You've been right friendly, but I can't get in the wrong side of Stevie G. I'm sure you understand. I bet your creaky old bones will snap really easy. Oh my god. I could probably squeeze this guy for information, so let's go for it. Hold on, that isn't necessary. I can get you into the stairwell, but you better not tell anyone that was me. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see what this is. The wall is crumbling here through a hole. You can see a rickety stairwell leading up, but it seems it can only be accessed through the locked apartments next door. Yeah, we've, we've already seen that. Hello, how are you doing? Is this your house? Don't mind me. I'm just a dwarf with a gangster going through your house, if that's okay. Gangster, gang member, ganger, whatever. Once we go upstairs, I'm not leaving until, until I find Coyote or I'm dead. You get it? Get it. Let's do this. Wait. How about... Oops. Where did my character go? There we go. My character glitched out a little bit there. I don't know exactly what happened. It's just I'm curious because there's a couple of guys down here. I wonder what they want. It's probably an alternate way to do it. Stop your pleading. Your boy has debts and we're collecting. Riker? From the Enterprise? <laughs> Please, Riker. No, he's my son. 
Get your ass back in your squat before I break something else. I'll send him upstairs instead. You want me to give him to Stevie? Maybe after he kills that girl we caught. You pig, give Zipper back now or, or you'll bleed on me. Zipper's gone. Get yourself a new kid. Oh wow, that's scumbag. That's douchebag of, the, of this guy. So these guys probably run the elevator here. What's this? What can I get from these computers? Computers. Hey, don't touch that. Touch whatever I goddamn please. Oh, there's two guys here. Haven't seen you before, guy. Looking to go somewhere special? Scream echoes through the pipes of the rotten walls. Hard to tell where it came from. So basically, I can either kill these guys or take the shortcut through the thing. I just, whatever. Fine. I'm, I'm actually going to ignore this particular section. I, I could basically... I guess that this is like the normal way of doing things if you hadn't persuaded this guy to help you out. So... We'll just go upstairs, beat the ever-living crap out of whatever is there. Let's do this. I'm also playing this on normal difficulty, in case you guys are wondering, because I'm not familiar with Shadowrun, the rule set, and all that stuff. Stevie J's penthouse apartment might have been nice at one point in time, classic even, but now it's filled with neon tube lighting. Great neon tube lighting. Broken down furniture, piles of rubbish, and crates containing who knows what. Still, compared to the rest of what you've seen, it's positively palatial. Palatial? I don't even know what that means. The only thing mar marrying this penthouse is pseudo-luxury as a woman's cry of pain in the distance followed by her laughter, someone being tortured for another's pleasure. You step deeper into the apartment. Karma gain three. Well, it's a good time for me to show you guys about karma while we're here. We actually have ten karma right now, so this is basically your leveling up um, section. So you can... Uh, you have multiple stuff to level up, um, from spells to uh, summonings to hacking machines and all kinds of other crazy th stuff. Uh, I created, my character is a, what they call a street samurai, I believe, which was just like, oh, this looks interesting. So I created that. I'm uh, trying to use a shotgun, uh, so I'm actually going to increase a little bit of my shotgun. Uh, you can do really diverse builds if you so desire. I'm trying to go for shotgun in close combat, so we're going to go for this, which is going to give me an additional uh, slot, which is actually pretty good because I wanted to be able to slot both my machete and my shotgun. Uh, and I think that I'm going to save the rest of my karma. Basically, you can build lots of stuff, like you can see here, ranged combat, pistol, small machine gun, shotgun, rifle. So I'm going for shotgun, blade approach. That is my approach right now. There's also an armed, uh, so, so when you're fighting with fists and stuff like that. I've actually already uh, punched someone in the face in the game and actually killed them, but yeah, fists are not the most efficient way to go about doing things. Not even melee, if I have to be honest. This game is more about shooting than melee, really. But either way, uh, we've spent a little bit of karma, so let's go back into the game. And now we're supposed to be able to equip our katana, right? Oh, it's already equipped. Sweet. Good stuff. We now have my machete, and my shotgun, and my fists. So as you can see, we are now in combat mode. Uh, because uh, basically we already have our weapons out, and I don't even see the enemies, which is bad. There is also supposed to be an Overwatch mode, though I haven't really been in any situation where I could have used Overwatch mode. Either way, I don't even know where I'm going to put this guy right now, because I can barely see on the, uh, on the other angle, and I'm not sure if you can turn the camera. It doesn't look like it. Definitely doesn't look like you can turn the camera. Let's have a look-see here. Uh, I'm going to put this guy down here. And I guess we'll end the turn. How do we end the turn over here? Okay. Well, nobody's moving still, so I guess we'll keep on doing our thing. I know that you're supposed to be able to do Overwatch somehow, but... It's supposed to show up here. I guess it's a skill that you need to acquire, because I can't do Overwatch yet. In which case, why the hell do I even care? I'll just move all the way here. The floor is quiet, save for the loud humming of fluorescent lights. It seems like you have a drop on Stevie G and his men. Okay, good. Let's not make too much noise then. So this is Crund. I'm not exactly sure what level he is. Can we even see that? Oops! Uh, my bad. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Oh well. 
Well, now I've pretty much uh, revealed myself, so I might as well just... Wait a second, who's this? Oh, crap. I didn't even see this guy, so I'm going to go and do something really, really risky. Actually, let's just... Screw you. There you go. That ought to fix you up. Now, the thing is, I want... It doesn't look like anyone can actually come from that side, so we're going to be moving back here. As you can see, this is very much reminiscent of XCOM, um, which is a really good thing, because I like XCOM in terms of combat and that stuff, so... I can't actually see anyone. So it looks like I'm going to have to do some kind of reconnaissance here. Which is bad, because I'm not going to be in, um, in cover if I do that. So let's go here. Now from here, I will move... I'm gonna have to go completely out of cover. There's a cell here? What's this? Hellhounds. The room beyond the bars is thinking of... is a stinking jumble of burned flesh and dog flop. An enormous hellhound, its first straked with whip marks, growls low. The eyes of a second hellhound burn menacingly in the corner. Shove the meat... Shove the zebra meat through the bars. Open the door. If I open the door, they're probably gonna attack me, so I'm gonna just shove the meat in there. Hellhounds devour the zebra meat in a few massive bites, and then they let out a contented growl. Open the door. Ooh. Look at Rurikan being all tactical and stuff. Hello, look who I found. Now let's move this guy over here. Yeah, we can actually move him a little bit further, even. I would say let's move you all the way over here so that you can actually shoot against those people. What's gonna happen now? Oh, she attacked her? That is awesome. Okay, but what I'm gonna do is... I can actually move there and still shoot her in the face, so that's probably what I'm gonna do. No, I'm actually gonna go machete style. Screw this. I got my machete! <laughs> oh, I can do it again? Okay, here you go. Chopped down by the butcher. The butcher dwarf. Okay, I guess uh, we can speak to Coyote now. Coyote's badly injured, but she's managing to hold it together. Are you alright? No time to talk. Coyote kneels and picks up the fallen guard's shotgun. It's time to finish this. Oh, well, looks like now we got three people. Very well, let's move onward. Doesn't look like there's any other loot that we can actually get here, so... We've already freed her, that's good. Uh, let's move over here. Uh, we can actually move a little bit further, so we should start doing so. Since there are no enemies in the map anyways. Dude, you actually need to reload, so I think I'm actually going to move you here. And you're going to do some reloading there. Now uh, let's get Coyote. Coyote's actually going to go behind this post over here. This column, even. Ooh, bad guys. I'm using Coyote as my tank, that's not very wise, I would imagine. I mean, what am I even saying in tanks? Like, there's actually the concept of a tank in this game, but... I'm gonna actually just straight move out of cover and be a badass dwarf like I tend to be. And now switch to my sh Oh, I can't switch to my shotgun? Yes, I can. Were they screaming? Were they saying something? I didn't even pay attention. Either way, you're gonna get shot in the face! And you're gonna get shot in the face again by my sh Oh, I can't? Oh yeah, because I moved. When you move, you can only shoot once. If you don't move, you can shoot twice. Now, if I move all the way over here, I can still shoot once, so that's probably what I'm gonna do, since I, I probably can't shoot at them. Nope. Line of sight's blocked, so let's move over here. Shoot this guy in the face. Oh, I can't. Line of sight's still blocked, but I can shoot this guy, so... There you go, get shot! And line of sight is blocked over here as well. But I do believe I can probably move here, right? Still shoot her? Nope. She's still out of line of sight. But we can shoot this guy. Shotgun blast in the face. This is not a really good position. But then again, neither of us are in good positions, be it me or the enemy team. So this guy is actually a spellcaster. He apparently can do some heals. Oh, there's another dwarf with a shotgun. A raspic, manic voice booms over the penthouse PA system. You really think you can come in here and shoot up my place? Do you know who I am? Well, you look like you got some Terminator Eye going there. Termini Terminator Eye action going there. I know who you are. You're the guy I'm going to kill. Who are you? Don't you want to know who I am? 
<laughs> who are you? Don't you want to know who I am? Mm, I, I do try to put in a little bit of humor whenever possible. Either way, it looks like we're going to be able to shoot this guy. We can. Uh, we have 11% chance to crit him. Which is not that great, obviously, but... Still, since we're out of, uh... Since we're out of cover anyways... Oh, we can actually hide behind cover here. Huh? Ah, still shoot in the face! There you go. Now... You... Can you shoot him? Nope. In that case, I'm gonna need you to move... Oh, wow, you've got a really long movement range there. Can I shoot any... Oh, I can shoot this guy? Yeah, but he's just gonna get healed by this guy eventually, so I guess I'll just... Oh, damn it, I really want to shoot twice, though. I guess I'll just shoot him instead, so... Boom! I should be able to get two shots. Boom! 24 damage! Damn, Coyote knows how to handle a shotgun! So I can hit this guy, 64% chance. Oh, wow, that was really lame, dude. Come on, Paco, you can do better than that. Damn it, like I said, he got healed. Luckily, this guy seems to have no aim at all. We need to get ourselves a healer in my party as well. Oh, trying to shoot me behind cover? Oh, damn, that guy hit me. I'm out of ammo, so I'll either have to reload or... Oh, hell no. It's machete time! How do you like them apples? How about you? Get chopped up! That's what I'm talking about. Now you... Wow. Shameful display, dude. Really shameful. Oh, you got a baseball bat. Well, slug her up. <laughs> I guess we can shoot this guy, or we can shoot this guy. This guy's at 72%, so we should probably do him instead. Boom. And we're probably out of ammo now. So what I'm going to do is actually hers. I'm going to reload. I'm going to take so much damage with my dwarf because I just put myself in such a terrible position. Oh, wow. I'm still alive, though. Okay. I guess it's my turn now, then. Uh, I do need to save one action to use, like, a med pack or something. Basic med kit. Basic med kit. We got two of these, so let's use one. There. Can I still, like, hit someone with my machete? Yeah, I can, so... Eat it! Now we got this guy with a baseball bat, which he's not going to do much with, I guess. Oh well, but I don't have a lot of choices here, so let's batter up! Wow, dude, you really suck with that baseball bat. Either way, that's what you get. Was that Stevie J? Oh, I just killed Stevie J! But no, I can't, and with bloody gurgle, Stevie J is no more. Now Coyote can still, like, can she st oh, she can't move, though. She's got line of sight blocked. I should have moved her. Damn it. Wait, I can use the med kit. Oh, she doesn't have it. Can I switch the inventory? Like, straight up? Could I, like, give this to someone? No, I can't because it's equipped. Okay, I get it. Sorry, guys. I'm still kind of figuring out a couple of things in the game because um, I'm not used to turn-based tactical RPGs. But, yeah, this is going to be painful because my dwarf is now going to take a bit of a beating here. There's not a whole lot that this chick can actually do for me. Except give them another target. Nope, but they're gonna still go for good old Rurikon. Oh, you're gonna run? Oh, look at that. I'm still alive. Guess what's gonna happen? How does that feel? Oh, wow. This is one resilient dwarf. Okay. Well, I guess it's time to batter up. Bonk. Oh, well, we had to kill the other dwarf. Poor bastard. Oh wait, there's still one guy remaining, I forgot about him. Okay, in that case, but she can still do stuff, yep. Shoot the bastard, shoot him in the face. Karma gain, three, about time we, you got here, Paco. Who's your friend? Just another professional, I need to ask you some questions. I'm Rurikon, I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> My name is Luke Skywalker, I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> no, I'm just another professional, I need, I need to ask you a couple of questions. Not now, Coyote. We need to get you back to the Union. Mrs. Kubota has that med lab in the basement. No. No, I need to finish the other thing I came here for. I need to find something for Mr. Delilah first. A stash of gems. 
Uh, never do another deal with that man. Look, Paco, I needed an excuse to come back here and settle some debts. Figured, figured I might as well get paid for it. Voice is strong still, but her body's beginning to shake. Coyote, you need medical attention. Forget the job. Let's get out of here. Paco, get... Help her back to the unit. I'll find those gems for you and then meet you back there. Sure. She says nothing. Come on, Coyote. Let's go. So now I'm left alone here to my devices. Is the game saved at this point? I'm not sure if it actually saved the game or not. Let me just double check. It is right now, it is 1930. So in order to actually check, because the game only auto saves, you can't manually save. So in order to actually check, you have to go here, go to load game and it tells you uh, 715. So actually, no, it did not. It did not. Um, ah, it did not save yet. So I probably should try to do whatever the hell they want me to do here, which was Pick up some gems. Probably hiding in here somewhere. Uh, my health is not... Oh, yeah, it is. I, it seems that you get full health once you complete quests or something. Okay, good. So this is the elevator, which was supposedly where we were supposed to be um, coming from. Let's see if we can open up this door. No? Door's locked, which means we probably have to go downstairs and beat the information out of someone because I can't see like anything else that we can interact with at a first glance. So let's go downstairs, beat the crap out of whoever's down there. Head back to the seamstress union. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, the elevator must have been through the other way though. So where the hell are those gems? I wanted to find those gems. Because I assume that we just got a side quest, right? Optional. Find Stevie's stash. Stevie J's penthouse apartment might have been nice at one point in time. Ah. Okay, yeah, I, ca I can't really figure out where exactly would those gems be. It's probably in here. Which means we probably have to go somewhere downstairs. Wait, what's this? Stevie J's passcodes. Okay, that's useful. Why would he hide them in the barbecue or whatever the hell that thing is? Uh oh. Why there had to be a hellhound? Holy crap. Uh, I'm not so sure about this, but let's go for it. Oh, okay, we're doing quite a bit of damage here, so. Uh, then again. Oh, he's uh, taking away my action points as well. Die, dog! There, that solves it. And this should be his stash, I would assume. You find a small velvet bag filled with precious gems. Yeah, it's just the way I roll, baby. Either way, we're gonna head back to um, gonna head back to the seamstress, seamstress union, and I wanted to show you guys something else about the game. So th this this particular uh, video up until this point should give you guys a pretty good idea of what the game is all about. You get this constant uh, tabletop feeling as you're playing this game, which is actually really nice. I haven't played a game like this in uh, in quite some time, and I have to to say that um, it's it's looking pretty good as far as I can tell. Uh, although once again, I'm not that expert when it comes to um, to Shadow Run. So okay, so the game auto saved now, so we're actually gonna leave. How do we exit back to the main menu? Here we go. But yeah, uh, so I'm not that knowledgeable about the, the lore of Shadowrun and all that stuff. So I'm not exactly sure like if they're being faithful to this franchise or whatever. But it is definitely um, fun. It's got the tactical feel to it. It's got all that stuff going for it. And I just wanted to show you guys something else, which is you guys have some content here, uh, which is... If you guys notice, uh, you got several bits of content here, and what this is, is multiple missions. Because since there is actually no voice acting, I'm not sure if you can actually do it or not, they created this uh, tool which they call, I believe, the Shadowrun Returns something, but you can add Shadowrun Returns Editor or something, and you can make campaigns. And so, apparently it's already installed uh, two more campaigns. The one that we were working on was the Dead Men Switch, uh, and apparently there's two more campaigns by Hairbrain Schemes. I hadn't seen these before, I had only seen the Dead Men Switch. But there is more uh, content, so you can basically, if you go over here to uh, Steam, it will actually show you, and if you notice, these are all like additional missions that you can actually do in-game. 
And if you notice, where's the numbers? Here it is. Showing one of 30 out of 206. So just imagine if you really are a fan of the Shadowrun tabletop game and all that stuff. Look at the amount of content you already have here. Now, I haven't played any of these uh, user-generated levels, but, I mean, seriously, there is just a ton of content here for people, which is really surprising. So it tells me that, the, I guess, the Shadowrun franchise has quite a bit of following if there, if there are so many people uh, working on stuff for it. But yeah, that was really surprising when I first noticed that in the game. Oops. Ugh. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that is uh, Shadowrun Returns by Harebrained Schemes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As per usual, leave me your comments, feedback, all the kinds of good stuff in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next one.